Hello gamers and modders. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make a simple TF2 mod using the new Valve SDK for TF2. First, I'll be going over my system configuration. We'll then start with downloading all the prerequisites. Afterwards, I'll explain the file structure and compile the game for the first time. We'll then do a simple change to the game by removing cooldown on the bad projectiles. And finally, I'll teach you how to distribute your game as a source mod. Chapter 1. System Setup. I am using Arch Linux, using the ISO from February 2025 and Arch install. I selected the desktop profile with Hyperland using Pawkit. I'm using ButterFS, the AMD open source drivers, SDDM, Pipewire, Grub. And I changed the Hyperland config to use Dvorak and removed the default config warning. I also installed Fish and OBS Studio before this tutorial. I'm willing to add the commands for apt in the description if someone gives me the package names, but I will be using pacman in this tutorial. Chapter 2. Prerequisites One more thing before we start, I am following a tech tutorial that I wrote on the Frog Fortress 2 Discord server, link is in the description if you want to meet other modders of Team Fortress 2. In terms of packages, we're going to need Steam, Podman and Ninja. Consider my system, I'm going to use the fifth option, and because I do not know what this is, I'm going to just use the default one. To use the SDK's files, we're also going to need Git and a text editor of your choice. I'll be using Vim, which is pre-installed, but you are free to use any code editor or ID that you like. You'll now need to pick a directory inside of which you'll save your TF2 mod. I'm going to use the documents folder, inside of which we are going to clone the Valve SDK, all the commands are in the description. The compilation script also requires that you have a folder called .ccache inside of your home directory. After installing Steam, you're going to want to make sure that the Tools tab is enabled. Then in your list of games, you're going to download Team Fortress 2 and the Source SDK based 2013 multiplayer. If you used TF2 mods before, you're going to need to make sure that the SDK based 2013 multiplayer is not running with a compatibility layer. If this box is unchecked, then it's all good. Now that everything is installed and downloaded, I will reboot my computer to complete the installation of Podman. Chapter 3. First Compilation In order to run the game correctly, you're going to need a couple of things that aren't explicitly mentioned in the documentation, but that I have found to be necessary. First is making sure you have the ENUS UTF-8 locale installed. To do that, I'm going to open slash etsy slash locale.gen with pseudo privileges. You'll then have to find this line and uncomment it. You can now save the file and run sudo localgen. If you encounter an error that tells you you are missing the engine.so file, you can run this command by replacing the documents folder with wherever you cloned the source SDK 2013 repo. After copying the file, you notice that it's still not loading, then you might need to install some other dependencies. These might either be in your TF2 folder or a package that you have to install. Here, the first missing library is libtr0, which I know is included in the TF2 files, so I'll copy it. I also copied libvsttlib.so and libsteamapi.so. Since I couldn't find libopenal.so.1 and libcurlgnutls.so.4 in the TF2 game files, I installed two extra packages, libcurlgnutls and openal. We're now going to compile the game for the first time. For that, navigate to the location of the source SDK. There are two folders in there that are important. The first one is game. That's where the output source mod will be generated. And the other one is SRC. This is where you will edit and compile the code. Let's navigate to SRC and run the build all project script. We have now compiled the game for the first time in release mode. We can now try running it. For that, I'll navigate to the game folder. I also need to have Steam open for it to work, which I'll keep in the background. And I can use the mod TF Linux 64 executable to start it.
Chapter 4. Your first mod. Let's modify the game a little bit. I will now go back to the source section and open my text editor. I'll now go to the game folder, inside of which are three important folders. Client handles everything that is exclusively client side. Server handles everything that is only on the server. And shared include things that are on both. We're going to modify our weapon, so that will be in shared. Here I have two specific files, I set up the tf folder. And the file we're going to edit is called tfweaponbat.cpp. And the change I want to make starts at line 269. In here, you can see that the game runs two checks before letting you projectiles with bad items. I'm going to remove these checks by commenting them out. And I'll save the file. I can now compile the game in debug mode. When testing your code, you should compile using debug mode instead of the release target. Debug mode adds breakpoints and other tools that generally help you find bugs. After equipping the right loadout, we can see that the game was modified. Chapter 5 Distributing your game. So of the game folder is mod underscore t. There is inside of this a file called gameinfo.txt. In this file's third line is indicated the name of the game. I'm going to leave it as Frog Fortress, but you can change this to whatever you want. The folder called mod tf is what you will share for people to download your game. In order to install a source mod, you need to go to the Steam Apps directory create the source mods folder if it's not present and paste the content of your mod. I will now see Frog Fortress in my list of games if I restart Steam. Here is Frog Fortress 2 and if I click play the mod game will start. That's it for today. If you want to find more tutorials and more TF2 modders you can join the Frog Fortress Discord server. The link is in the description.